Welcome back everybody. Welcome to the pit. That was probably a little tasteless. Uh, I just got a little hyped up on a video from last week about a certain ESC from a certain fella out west. Um, so today I'm gonna go over the old ESC 70. I just threw it in here. This is a new build I'm working on. Uh, I haven't made a mount yet, but this particular ESC 70 is over a year old and has been in constant use for the entire year. I realize that there are lots of people who have had horrible luck with these, and I don't discount that at all. I've had horrible luck with other ESCs, um, but there's also people like me who have had multiple ESC 70s and no issues. So I just, uh, I wanted to go through and show how I've got mine set up, show how it works and give my opinion on why this is actually better than a 1080 mainly just for a couple of reasons. I'm not saying that the 1080 is bad because it's definitely not, but the two biggest things for me anyways is the Bluetooth app, way handier than carrying around a programming card. If I need to change something and just connect Bluetooth, bam, done don't even have to unplug the rig i don't have to turn it off i don't have to nothing and the biggest reason why i don't run hobby wing or spectrum where i rarely do is for the simple fact that through the esc you cannot set up your own throttle curve and I know that that's not a big deal for a lot of people, but for me, I like to have that extra plush throttle feel, I guess. I like that extra modulation, and I can do that with this. Can't do that with a 1080. And I don't have fancy remotes that can do it through the remote. And this is about as cheap as you can get. And it works great. Um, I do not have multiple cameras, so it's gonna be a little tricky going through the app and showing how everything is set up. So I'm probably just gonna have to do a screen record, turn everything on, I'll go through every setting parameter that I've got, I'll show my throttle curve. Um, and then I'll probably have to come back and do a voiceover or type paragraphs and put subtitles in. I'm not sure about that yet. But after I show the whole setup, then we'll take this untested rig out and I will show you how it performs. And I, I don't know what else I could do to argue with the fact that this thing works great. So, I uh, will go through and turn it on and do the screen recording stuff, and I will get back out here shortly. I also don't have a, a mount or anything, so... Bear with me here. This is going to be kind of ugly for a second.
Okay, so here I'm opening up the app. Pull up the Wraith ESC because I haven't swapped it out, swapped out the name yet. Um, takes a few seconds to pop up and connect. Whatever, that doesn't bother me at all. But as you can see, everything's looking good. Go into my settings here. Um, run through, and you can see how everything's set up here. Um, I don't feel the need to go through and walk through every single one of these. You can pause and see what I got, but everything sends and sets perfectly fine. Now, I will say that the active drag brake and your brake force is important. So take from that what you will if you want a strong drag brake. Send in those same parameters. Everything's fine. Now we'll go into my throttle curve here. And that right there is all it takes to get that smooth, soft throttle feel Everything up in the right upper quadrant is your throttle. So move it a little bit. And then everything in the lower left quadrant is going to be your reverse throttle. It may not be super intuitive, but if you mess around with it for a minute, you'll get it figured out. I promise you that much. And it appears that I've got the most up-to-date everything from what I can tell I mean I don't have any issues with it so I don't see what else I can go through there but that's all I've got that's the setup and everything works just fine and you will have your motor output disable error for a second until everything reconnects and resets in the ESC Bam, back to good, exit out, ready to boogie. So, I do have, I guess, what is supposed to be the most current, you know, software, whatever, the most current update. Um, so, I cannot speak to the original version of the ESC-70. However, like I said, this one is, I got it almost exactly a year ago. Um, maybe off by a week or two, but it has been pretty much a full year. So, I, I didn't have any issues setting it up right out of the box as far as calibrating it. I haven't had any issues since as far as... Uh, losing calibration or any of the weird issues that some other people are having um, the only the only and it's not even really an issue uh, but the only thing that's been kind of odd with this is it seems like if you're you hammer down for a second and then you let off the throttle super quick sometimes it will do a little jittering deal to the motor but it, I don't, it has, does not affect anything as far as performance goes and as far as drag brake goes which seem to be one of the complaints about this thing you can see I mean, that's, that's me touching the throttle. These are two twos. That's pretty close to uh, an electronic anchor, as some would say. Yeah, that's more tire slipping than anything. 
and that real low smooth throttle application is exactly what I do not get with the 1080 just because it's it, it gets into the power so soon that without a throttle curve it's hard for a fat finger like me to keep it slow and steady which is why throttle curve is so important to me. I have it softened up so that I've actually got a little bit more of a, essentially a dead band in neutral. Uh, the, the ramp itself throughout the throttle curve isn't quite as important, I guess. Uh, once you get up past the mid-range because at that point you're you're in hammer town anyways but from from nothing to mid-range i i like a soft throttle but like i said i'm i'm not sure how else i could do this video uh, I know it's not as thorough as probably what it should be. Um, just because I don't have multiple cameras to set up to show you what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So I felt like it was kind of pointless for me to, you know, completely uninstall the entire app. Uh, unbind the receiver and everything and start from scratch because I would essentially have to screen record and record me doing stuff to the car at the same time and I don't have that capability currently so it, I don't know I just feel like that would have got me nowhere so I just figured I would show my current setup, I would go through the parameters that I've got on there and uh, to show that everything is working just fine. It's got a good drag brake, it's got good power delivery, it's smooth. Don't take the performance of the rig into consideration. Like I said, this is this is a new project that I'm currently putting together and it's just pieced together at the moment. Uh, this isn't the body that's going on it. The frame needs to be chopped. I've got shock towers to make. I've got all kinds of stuff going on. But anybody who has seen my videos of the race in the past, that is the ESC that is currently in here. And it, it has been a damn good ESC. I currently have a 1080 in my base camp. And I guess as far as YouTube time goes, uh, the trail run video that I put up before, right before this one, I guess it will be, you can see how jumpy that 1080 is in the base camp. I don't get this super smooth low end crawl ascending or descending, especially not on descent. That 1080, it's, it's a good ESC. I'm not bashing it. It's a good ESC, but not having that throttle curve, not having that soft and smooth throttle application that just kills it for me and you'll have to excuse me here and stumble for words I'm not the guy that talks to the camera most of the time so I'm, I don't know I got super fired up 
listening to this dude talk and seeing how he was trying to set his ESC up and granted I would I would give half of the issues that he was having and I'm not going to name drop but I'm assuming that if you found this video you probably know exactly who I'm talking about because you probably saw his first uh but I give 50% of his issues with his ESC to the fact that he got one of the first versions of it and it's pretty well looks like it's junk um but 50% of the problems that he was having was on how he was going about setting it up and I don't understand all the hatred towards having a Bluetooth app. I, I don't feel like I'm a slave to this app for customization. I feel like the app is a pro, not a con. Just for the simple fact that if I needed to change something, let's say I'm done crawling right now, I'm getting ready to go on a, like a hike and go trail running and I wanna get rid of my drag brake sensitivity. I don't have to take my body off, hook up a card to the receiver, ESC, however you got your connectors hooked up. I usually have Y connectors in mine so that I can get to them easy in my, uh, in my castle ESCs, cause that one, you do have to hook up at least a B-Link to get your Bluetooth. Uh, but with those programming cards on the 1080, you gotta tear everything apart, hook up the card, set your parameters, and then unplug it, turn it off, turn it back on, put the body back on, and then go. With this here, I've just gotta stop. Click on the click on the app. Set my parameters and continue driving. The fact that uh, I'm a slave to my app, well, in this case, I I'm I'm cool with that. So I don't know. I right now I'm I'm glad that I waited almost a week to make this video because uh, watching that ESC 70 review last week, boy, my blood was boiling. I feel like if I couldn't, if I couldn't have made it work like it was supposed to, I could have at least helped the situation some just because I've had enough experience with this thing. I don't know, the proof is in the pudding here. I, I don't know what else to say other than try a newer one, man. There's nothing wrong here. There's absolutely nothing wrong here. I'll see if I can get it to do the jittering thing. flat ground maybe and the fact that I can't get it to do it should show you how rare and random it is Apparently it don't want to do it, which is a good thing, but. And before anybody says, well, that thing don't have any power, 
Uh, this is an element frame and uh, transmission and skid. And I have not changed any of the gearing. So that was all set up for straight axles and the motor and axles and yeah, the axles and the electronics all came out of my wraith. And that has been set up to be a straight crawler uh, with portal axles. These are actually uh, Capra style axles. And I haven't changed the pinion gear or anything. So she's geared super low at the moment. So there's not a whole lot of wheel speed to be had. Uh, but I have run this in other rigs that had taller gearing. And I promise you it's got just as much power delivery as a 1080 does but I hope that made you laugh. But as many times as I've tried to make it do it, and I only got it to do it once, it, it literally does nothing to hinder performance. It's just an annoying vibration, basically, in the motor. I've had it do it on serious inclines. Uh, while the drag brake was engaged, it did not affect the drag brake in the least little bit. So, from from my perspective, if all I got to worry about is a little jitter once in a blue moon, then and I get my throttle curve and my Bluetooth app, so I don't have to carry a program card around. I'm good with it. If, if there is something specific that anybody would like to see so far as this ESC goes, uh, any more details on the parameters that you can set or anything, uh, let me know. Like I said, I've never done a full-blown review. I don't have multiple cameras so that I can show you the app in one hand and show you what I'm doing to the rig on the other hand. Uh, I've literally just got my iPhone and that's it. So, uh, I'm not sure what else to say here other than how can you hate on this ESC? <laughs> I can hate on this rig's performance currently because I haven't got it set up. Oh, it's going to be set up yet, but as far as the ESC goes, zero issues. Just do some crawling since I'm already out here. I suppose if I think of something else to rant about, I will. How y'all doing? Did you have a good weekend? Hopefully you had some decent weather like we've got today. It's a little on the chilly side, but 
Uh, it's pretty nice. It's not windy and there's no tornadoes. So that's a plus. Just got back from uh, a group crawl here. Uh, a little ways up the road. That was a good time. I had never been to a group trail run before. That was kind of cool to experience. Really hoping that I can, hopefully tonight and tomorrow after I get these videos done and uploaded and out of my hair, I'm really hoping that I can get to get to work on this thing. I'm pretty excited about this build. Like I said I need to chop the chop the front of the frame off. Uh, get rid of this damn gatekeeper body and uh, just like I did with my Ecto I need to make me a set of uh, shock mounts that way I can get some more adjustability and get my body posts mounted up front and then I think once I get that done then I should be able to get the new body set, get the holes drilled, and then it's time to start painting. I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm gonna, what colors I'm gonna go with. Uh, it's just it's gonna be a, another creep body. Uh, it seems like here lately I've been. Uh, been ending up with like some military motif I just painted the six by six over the last couple days it's more of like a, a tannish gray color with a little bit of rust here and there and, and then the uh, base camp in the ecto both had a green base did, uh, did a little bit of weathering on so got to imagine that this one's probably going to end up being about the same just with some uh, different weathering techniques I think I'm going to try my hand at some airbrushing on this one I had never tried to airbrush before so that ought to be interesting. Let's see how that goes. I'm hoping it turns out pretty good. This should be a pretty beastly rig once I get done with it. Not so much with these tires on it or this body, but overall it should be pretty sweet. You know, these tires don't do bad for Chinese knockoffs. There's some no-name shorter 2-2 bulgers. And I've been running them on the Wraith in class three in the last couple months. And they've actually been doing pretty well. Um, they have been cut and siped. So I know that definitely helped. But they're still running the, the foams that came in them from the factory. I've been pleasantly surprised with them. I don't know if I'll stick with uh, two twos on this rig and keep it a class three. Look at that drag brake. Mm -mm -mm. Lifting the back tires up. I don't know, I probably might end up keeping the two twos on it and keep the class three around because I think that those comps will still be going for another month or so. And it's kind of nice having a rig with bigger tires on it too, especially out here. But definitely need to find some 
some better tires though better performing tires for crawling anyways these are killer for running trails but they, they've got a hard harder lug compound so they don't conform and they could definitely bite a lot better but i think they were only like 20 bucks so i really can't complain too much And then once I get this thing finished up, it's definitely be going to go head to head with Ecto. Cause that thing is is the absolute champ of the pit, and nothing else that I've got even touches it. Even with the same wheels and tires, that thing is just killer. So I'm hoping. Hoping this thing will give it a run for its money. I had planned on doing a base camp versus Acto build, but I think that the base camp, I'm just gonna keep it as a trail truck. And that's just not even a fair comparison. <laughs> I, guess, I guess one thing I haven't done I haven't actually put up uh, Ecto versus TRX-6. I guess I could do, uh, do some tire swapping and do some adjusting on the suspension on Creeper. Because right now it's set up for to be a tow rig. That could be an interesting video. I'm pretty sure the Ecto will kick its ass, but I suppose that would be interesting. If you're interested in seeing the, the Ecto take on the six by six in a crawling competition out here, let me know. I think that could be a fun video. I think the only tires that I have six of um well the tires that are on it now are some stock red cat like the mud terrain tires uh which aren't the best but i've also got uh six hyrax tires and those are also in the predator compound just like the crawlers on the ecto so I might have to go ahead and just put the high racks back on if I end up doing that. We'll hit a couple more obstacles here. It's a good day for it. And I think it's supposed to rain this week, so I might not get a chance to get back out for a while. So it's going to be a long one. I know this is supposed to be. ESC 70 based, but I mean, you can see how it's crawling. I'm not not having any issues here with the with the power delivery, and that throttle curve is a wonderful thing to have. But I'm just having fun. I don't expect too many people to watch this till the end. All the information that you needed to know was there at the beginning anyways. As much as it irked me, I I didn't I don't want to start any any beef with anybody and I don't I don't have the standing to be able to do that anyways, but it, it really kind of got under my skin to see somebody that understandably had a bad experience with the first version of this ESC. But the lines that some people draw in the sand, it just blows my mind. 
like give the company a break they had a shitty first version but they've obviously fixed whatever was wrong obviously and the same same guy uh, for some reason has got some sort of a vendetta against the pro line as well which I do not understand I don't think I've ever actually heard an explanation for that one but dude refuses to run pro line anything I think the only pro line that I've seen on his channel was not even a set of crawler tires it was a set of hyrax for uh oh what was it what did maybe maybe on his laser nut or something but yeah i don't know i i don't think that there is a single company out there that i have uh drawn that kind of line in the sand where I just will refuse to run any product that they have especially when their products are proven performers I get it uh, I, I'm sure that there are people out there that see how I operate and get just as upset and angry and don't understand this ESC was just one of those things I, I had to at least show some sort of proof that regardless of how the first version worked or didn't work this thing is currently pretty sweet a little bit more food for thought i guess we're just gonna go no music at all since that's how people seem to like it what are your thoughts on foc versus no foc me personally i kind of like the stalled out i mean not to an extreme where there's no power but see you're slow crawling you get to a spot like this you're still on the throttle just a tiny bit and it stops now in the scale world that happens with full size rigs so when it comes to driving these things i like that feel that's a, another portion of the reason why i tend to go castle over hobby wing there's something about that FOC, just the feeling while driving it. I just, I can't get into it. Yeah, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. But I like having to really drive my rig over the terrain. And that FOC stuff, that's, it's kind of like having cruise control to me. Like it's all—it's almost like cheating. I mean, it, 
I don't want, I'm, not, I'm not talking down about anybody who prefers it. I'm curious to see what anybody who's made it this far in the video thinks. But for my taste and my preference, I I really like the the dynamic of having to drive through a bound up situation. Something about it just seems a little more realistic to me. And I think we're gonna do one more obstacle here and then we'll call it. This has been way longer than I was expecting it to be and probably not half as informative as what most people would probably expect. But. It's, it's hard to argue with results. So that's what I'm sticking to. If you, if you haven't tried a newer version of this ESC 70 and you've drawn a line in the sand because you had a bad experience before, how can you argue with this is all I'm going to say about it. Yeah, you may have wasted 30 bucks a year or more ago, but if you're like me and you are a fan of throttle curve or Bluetooth programmability and you like a cheaper ESC, give it another shot. There is nothing wrong here. I will continue to run these as long as I run a brushed system in a crawler. That is an electronic anchor. be it for today i guess the only thing i really got to say is mr brawler salmon i look forward to your next video of the what is hopefully a newer model of the esc 70 i, I don't expect you to throw your 1080s away after you give it a shot because you've already made up your mind for the most part but I will all but guarantee that you will have a completely different experience than what you had before. And in closing, I really only got one thing to say.